morning all. Game day, match day, match day, match day two. Um, Aston Villa, Aston Villa away. Uh, uh, I said to my mate last night, I, I, I dread and look forward to these games with equal sort of um, balance because I love it, love it when we play Villa and do well against them. Obviously, it hasn't happened an awful lot in recent times. Um, excuse me. Obviously, we got um, a draw against them last. I think the last time we played them, we got a draw, which arguably we should have gone on and won. Um, I'll go through that game in a minute. But look forward to playing them because we, I don't like Villa. Um, I know a lot of Newcastle fans don't like Villa. A lot of Newcastle fans have got... Um, same sort of reasons for me and not liking Villa and a lot of Newcastle fans have got more reasons I think the prime one of the primary reasons is how a large um, section of and from what I hear a, a near enough majority of Villa fans treated the uh, the Toon Army um, when we got relegated in 09 obviously we played Villa last game of the season Gareth Barry slash goal slash Damien Duff own goal. I remember watching that on the TV. Um, so I was what? 15? 15 at the time, yeah. Um, watching that on the TV. Um, and then it, it's gone on, you know, the chants and stuff like that. It, it was just, just felt unnecessary, you know. If it was Birmingham, you know, you could absolutely totally understand if it was Wolves or Bromwich or... You know, any of Leicester, any of the other Midlands teams, not in Forest, not in West County, you could understand it, but the fact that it was, you know, Newcastle, nothing to do with Villa, really. Uh, my reasons are, it's nothing ever good ever co comes out of playing Villa, it seems, apart from the Andy Carroll trick in 2010. I remember that, I remember that very well. Um, like, I think it was Sir Bobby Robson's last game, um, Obviously, the Kieran Dyer and Lee Bowyer bullshit. Um, you know, I think we it was a similar scenario in 2016. We were heading down. We got the dogs abuse for them as well. Um, last season, at the fixture at Villa, this reverse fixture at Villa Park. Um, obviously, Jack Grealish, you could hear quite clearly, saying just keep passing the ball. He's a shite. And I don't know. It just just feels like I just don't like Aston Villa. Respect Aston Villa. Oh, I don't like the, some of the fans. Um, the club is obviously a historic club, um, similar stature to Newcastle in terms of club size. Um, but and also at the minute, I know they've just left, pro lost probably, arguably their best ever player. But um, a little bit jealous of them. No, screw the fuck that. Very jealous of them. You know, they, they they're a team who certain parallels with us that they knew they weren't going anywhere with Steve Bruce they got rid and now look at them they're flying you know they lost last week but they're, they're a club that's going places they've got ambition you know um, the owners they've got decent owners the the, the executive or, or that fella who came out and released the video for the fans brilliant nothing in that was, was promising the world or we're going to do this and we're going to do that and like you know he, he laid out ambitions but it was just being honest with the fans he was like look this is what's happened this is what we wanted to do that's why that happened and, fan, and, and you know it, if as a Villa fan I can imagine you were like yeah you know the, the, we, we know where we stand we know what this, this fella's trying to do we know what the club's trying to do here whereas with Newcastle there is zero um, communication with the, with the club but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit jealous of Villa, you know, they, they came up, um, they solidified, they pushed on last season, they got some cracking players, they made some serious money with Jack Grealish, they brought in Danny Ings, who is one of the hottest strikers in the Premier League, you know, they brought in that Bundia from the Championship, they're a club that are attracting players, you know, that there's a bit of traction there, I'm not saying they're going to go on and win the league in a few years, but... Villa are moving in the right direction, whereas Newcastle are um, standstill traffic. 
the top of a hill with the handbrake off. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so last season, first game, uh, we were beaten comfortably 2-0 away at Villa. Um, from what I remember, it was just a comprehensive victory. It was very, very comfortable for Villa. They were easily the better side, particularly in midfield. And then the reverse fixture at St James Park, where we had that, I think it was the third game out of that four game streak where we had, I think, we, did we have all the Midland sides at one, in one go? So I think we had Wolves, Villa, Brom, and then uh, Brighton, I think. Anyway, we got a draw against Villa. Remember, I remember um, Joe Linton having two or three good, good chances to score, and he like he did the odd bit, and then when it comes to the finish, he would just hesitate or he just anywhere, anywhere near it. I can remember Dwight Gale being played on the wing. Um, nice one, Steve Bruce. Never played players out of position. Never went to his radio interview. Um, I can remember Jacob Murphy coming on and saving the day after hitting the crossbar. Who scored? Jamal LaSalle's. That's it. I can remember Jacob Murphy come on and he had a chance. He got so excited you could see it in him. His eyes lit up and he smashed it against the crossbar. And then in like the last minute, he whipped a great ball in and then Jamal LaSalle's got the header. That's all worth that one. Uh, watching it. Wow. So, Villa, um, what can we expect this weekend um, of today? What we're looking at half past nine now, three o'clock kickoff. Um, Villa, obviously it's Villa's first home game of the season, so they're going to have a bit of bounce. It's going to be a bit of excitement. And the, the fans, I imagine, are not going to be on their backs because last week was obviously an anomaly. Villa, that's not their style of play. Um, that's clearly not their identity, or if I wanted to be one of these knobs on Sky Sports, their philosophy. Um, you know, Dean Smith is this club, but they're a better team than that, no doubt. So. The whole end is going to be rocking. They're going to have a bit more bounce, a bit more verve about them. We're going to have to be... It sounds weird, but we're going to have to be a lot better. We're going to have to improve a lot more than Villa are to survive in this game. Because we're obviously playing away. We're not that great a team. Um, be interesting to see what system we go for, because we went, we had... Five defenders on the pitch last week. Or you could say Richie and, and Murphy aren't, well, they're clearly not defenders, but they were playing in defensive positions. So we had five defenders on the pitch last week with a def uh, an ex defender as a manager, and we still couldn't sit before it. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what system we go for. I imagine it'll be the same again. Um, in terms of changes, we know that uh, John Joe Shelby is out, which don't want to jump on the bandwagon, you know, you tra trawl through all my videos. When he plays well, I give him credit, however, it's uh, obvious and evident he's not one of my favourite players and I think we should have got rid uh, two, three years ago. But he's not playing, I think it's either hamstring or thigh or something. It, anyway, it, it's uh, during pre-season he had a problem on one leg and he's got the same problem on the other leg. Um, so I imagine it's going to be the exact same system with defence I pray and he brings in Cher and the cells because Clark and Kraft didn't do it last week um, Clark was by his standards dismal and Kraft was just just Kraft um, played out of position uh -huh. But the midfield is going to be the interesting thing. You know, we had a midfield of Hayden, Shelby, and Elmer, which, on the balance of it, you look at it, that is quite a balanced midfield, or it should be, because you've got your you've got your um, your DM, you're sort of breaking up the play, destroyer, if you like. You know, as a Hayden, you've then got your your. I want to say box to box, but a bit more balance, you know, a bit more, a bit of defence, a bit of attack. Man in the middle, uh, John Joe Shelby, you can take the play, you know, pin the ball around. And then you've got your should be number ten attacking midfielder, uh, Miguel Ron, but it just doesn't work because John Joe Shelby had a good 
a good 10, 15, maybe, maybe 20 minutes. Good start to the game where you look you know, full of, you know, full of energy. It was vociferous with his play. He got about the park well. Um, and then it just faded immediately. And then um, Miggy Almiron, I thought Hayden did okay. I would have liked to have been able to hold position a little bit more because he looked ambitious and he got forward quite a bit, especially in the first half. And I was thinking, whoa, whoa that, that's, that's Miggy's job. You know, fair play to Hayden for doing it. You know, the enthusiasm and that drive is fantastic, but just hold back a little bit, you know, in my opinion. Um, but Miggy was just, nah, I, I don't rate Miggy in central of the field. Uh, he needs to be playing number 10 or against one of the so-called weaker teams. I hate to say that because, you know, we were relegation candidates for a large chunk of the season last year. But, you know, against, say hypothetically, and no offence to Norwich or Brentford, but at some stage of the season, Norwich or Brentford are going to really, really struggle. Watford as well. Um, it is what it is. So against a team like that when they're struggling, you can get away with playing Miggy on the wing. But in midfield, he's just, no, no, no. No, no, we, 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 we tried it. We, we, <laughs> we tried it away to Wolves last season where we got lucky with a Murphy free kick. And we tried it again, it just do not work, you know. Same as playing Ryan Fraser in midfield, you know. It, it, that guy was born to play on the wing, beat people and whip crosses in. And I don't know why we're playing him yeah, up front in the false nine. We're in midfield. But um, so the midfield three. I assume he's just going to swap Shelby out for Willock, which would be very interesting because then you've got um, two very attack-minded midfielders and then all the defensive um, onus in the midfield is on Isaac Hayden. Obviously, I know, we know Joe Willock will put the effort in to screen and, and press and we know, obviously, maybe Almiron you can never, ever fault his work rate and effort. He just can't tackle and he doesn't really know what he's doing. So, personally, if I was the manager, I would start Payton, start Willock, and I would bring in one of the long staffs. Now, at this stage, who is the best one to bring on? I don't think it really matters at this stage of the season. It's only the second game in. Like Sean got a few minutes last week. Um, you know, if we were 20, 25 games in and Matty hadn't played at all, and Sean had played a lot, it's obviously better to play than Sean because, you know, he's much fit and he's marky. But uh, Matty Longstaff, you know, he's give him a chance. Give him a chance or send him out on loan um, because, you know, this is the last year of his contract. A measly, weird two year little contract he was given. You know, hasn't that time flown? Uh, what a complete waste of a season last season was. Um, if we want Matty Longstaff to stick around, we have to start playing him. Um, Steve Bruce was very keen on keeping Matty Longstaff. Um, now, whether that was just to sign him on to then hopefully sell him on for some money, but then again, if you want to get some money out of someone, you've got to fucking play him. You know? Otherwise, it's just like, you know, you're trying to sell Matty Longstaff. And so, well, he hasn't, he's hardly played for two years, you know, we, who knows what he's capable of. But yeah, so I would be playing those three. If I had to play the 5-3-2, it would be those three, and then obviously some Maximum. And Wilson up top, although I do prefer some Maximum on the wing. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but yeah, we were very open, very cavalier last week, you know, especially when we went... Uh, when it was 2 all, 3 2, we just piled forward with no sort of organisation. Who, who was covering, you know, and it was just key areas of the field where we needed to retain the ball and win the ball and show a bit of guts and a bit of desire and a bit of, a bit of bollocks. We, we lost those battles. But looking forward to the game. Um, Obviously, our defence is going to have to be on, 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 on good form because Danny Ings is, is as sharp as they come. Uh, John McGinn is obviously a shrewd operator in midfield, so it'll be interesting to see how our midfield gets on against him. Um, like I said, Miggy, Willock and Hayden is too attacking, so it'll probably be 
Willock. He'll have to start Willock. If he starts Jeff Hendrick ahead of Willock, and Willock's fully fair. Ooh. Anyway, really looking forward to the game. Hopefully the boys can, can put in a good shift. Uh, let's do well. Let's have a, a proud performance. You know, Count Wilson can get on the score sheet again. I think it's fantastic. Um, players, we need to have a cracking game. Um, we want obviously Freddie Woodman to do well. He didn't do anything wrong last week, but he will still feel like he did because he conceded four goals. We want Freddie to have a good game. We want the three centre backs to play well together, whoever they may be, or two centre backs, hopefully. Um, we need Sam Axelman to have a court there because he, he didn't play badly last week, but you know, it's his third season now, it's time to kick off. So, looking forward to it. Three o'clock kickoff, not on Sky. Um, but yeah, match of the day tonight. See all the highlights up to tomorrow.